everyone, it's Brenda. So I'm going to do two pours today and I didn't want to do them on Facebook Live only because they've been coming out so bad. Um, I think it's a lot to do with the heat, may also be to do with my paint mixing. So I was gonna practice a little bit before I showed them to you. I've turned up so many that haven't turned out. So we're gonna start, we're gonna do an open cup pour and then we're gonna do a flip cup, something I've never done before. It's another reason why I'm doing them uh, separately. So both of them are gonna be on 12 by 12 canvases. Both of them are gonna start with white. And let me, uh, determine that I don't have enough white on here. So I'm going to spread this out. So my white, I just used some um, Montmartre titanium white, and then I used a little bit of that liquid acrylic white, that I, the Handy Art that I had been using. I used the last of that. Um, and some Floetrol. Just a tiny bit of pouring medium and a little bit of water, just enough water to uh, thin it out just a little bit. I know it still looks pretty thick, but trust me, it's not compared to what it was. So I've been trying to use um, better paints, if better, if um, cost is an example of better. I also, on this one, I prepared my canvas by wetting the back just a little bit before I put tape on it. Um, I took a spray bottle of just plain water, wet the back because it tightens the canvas and makes it a whole lot easier um, and stops the paint from congregating so badly in the middle. All right, so this is gonna be the open cup pour after I make more messes. We'll start with a little pool of white. I'm actually gonna thin that white down just a little bit more. I think it needs to be a little bit thinner for this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a mess. And see, this is why I didn't want to do it on Facebook Live this time. All right. So there's some white. And then I'm gonna take this little cup. Instead of that big cup I've been using, we're gonna use a smaller cup. I'll start up here. And we're gonna start with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And on top of that, I'm going to put a little bit of this crimson red. So, um, the Payne's Gray is by Grumbacher. The crimson red is by Arteza. The blue I'm going to use is Liquitex Basics and Artist Lofts Metallic. I'm using the bright yellow green by Liquitex Basics. And I use this metallic red. And then I use the Deco Arts Extreme Sheen 24 karat metallic gold. Those are the colors I'm gonna be using. So let's put this, this is the bright blue. That's the, uh, that's the Artist Loft Blue Metallic. And then we've got the Art Artist Loft Metallic Red that we're gonna put on next. This is the Artist Loft Sheen White, Pearl White. And on top of that, I'm gonna put this green. 
I loved this green. Put this bright blue there. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the color starting to pop out the bottom. And we're starting to get some movement of the cup, which is what I wanted. Let's put some gold in there. I love that gold. And on top of that, we'll use a little more gray. I want to see what this green will look like on top of that gray. So, you know, I was, I was saving old paints and just kind of mixing things up, but I've been having so much problems with paint, paint things cracking, and I'm sure it's the heat, it's the fact that they're not drying at the same rate, that I decided not to do that anymore. I'm going to just mix up just enough paints to use them, and if I have to, so if I have to toss some, I hate it, but I'll toss it. And we're going to move this, the rest of this, back over to here. And let's add some more colors. The white. Look at those cells forming. I don't have any silicone in any of this. So this is all forming with just the paint. The Floetrol, a tiny little bit of gloss pouring medium, and water. And it's just a tiny little bit of water too, just enough to help thin it out just a little because I didn't want to change the consistency of the paints. And I actually already have the paints layered for my next pour. I'm kind of letting them seep together. That may be a mistake. I'm not sure yet. We'll find out. But I'm hoping that they'll meld, not make, not mix colors, but kind of meld together and um, start producing some bigger cells, some better cells. Of course, this one's got some gorgeous cells in it. And I'm gonna bring this just a little bit. And let's go over here. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this white in there. Everything is pretty much empty. Let's put this pearl white back on there. And then we're going to top it, this pearl white, with a little bit of the gold. And we should be good to go. And we'll torch it a little bit and do a little bit of pouring, a little bit of movement. Well, that was what I would want to do, but it's not going to mess anything up. That I can promise you. And I did it again. I forgot to torch the white before I put the paint on it. So we will have some air bubbles show up. Look at all those cells forming there. Look at all the different colors. That's going to be gorgeous when it gets... Love that rainbow look right there. So let's do some just real slow pouring. So my goal here is not necessarily to get the paint off the canvas as much as it is to stretch the cells. Stretch the paint around. I'm actually going to get a corner saver. 
So my corner saver is nothing more than a piece of cardboard, but I'll use it when I get, get ready to get closer to corners. Like right here. All right, we're gonna get ready to get off this corner. We'll put this here. And this is a way to kind of conserve your paint a little bit. And before we go any further, we wanna bring the paint back to the center. Before we take it off anywhere else, then we wanna look at it kind of critically and think, where do we wanna go next? Like, let's do this corner next. Okay, got our paint back in the center. You can kind of tell where the paint is, that it's in the center because where it's moving the fastest, where it's moving the most is, the, is where it's the heaviest. And you want the majority of your paint to be there. Wow, that is looking gorgeous. It's looking so pretty. All right. Let's go down to this corner before we get off anything else where we have the oops. Let's bring it. Look at that. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I see a small area here I need to get out. There's a lump. Where did it go? Right there. Look at that. Wow, am I pleased with that. Look at all of those colors. Okay. So I love that one. I'm going to do some moving. Let's make sure that our corners are, are covered. All the edges look to be nice and covered. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna lift it up and kind of look at it in light and make sure I don't have any more imperfections there. And then we'll go set it on the drying table. Oh, I'm happy with that one. 